Okay, so we're about to begin the installation process of the CX44 wall insert panel, which is going to be kind of a combination of your wall insert and the panel, the flat panel. This is your all-in-one system that we use most oftenly in our container builds. Again, super simple, that's what it was designed for. And what we're gonna do is, to start this process off, is just kinda lay out a couple of them to get an idea and make sure you got the InsoFast, you know, the way the panel's gonna go with the InsoFast facing up. And you got all your tabs in the right location. So again, checking all that stuff. I lay them out and then you could take a marker or whatever, and you can mark which ones have the hooks so that you can go through and cut those sections out. Then what I like to do is use my good old multi-tool to, now this recess section of the panel is touching this section, the, these, I guess the non-recess portion of the container. So in most cases, these hooks are gonna be behind that. So generally, I don't have to ever cut any deeper than here. So when I'm taking the section out of here, I just kind of take an imaginary line across this section here that I know I don't have to go any deeper than that. And then generally the hook, you can see this one's a little off the center of that crease. So more than often, I just take out from this crease here, I'll come in and I'll cut straight down through there. And then this one I know is a little bit out of center. So I'm gonna take a little more and then cut it in here. Okay, and then this is where I'm looking for this as a reference line. I don't have to go much deeper than that. And now I can just grab that and break that piece right out. And that should go right in and make that panel sit nice and perfect. All right, so now when we actually start install these, we're gonna prep all of them that way, get all those hooks cut out. Then we're gonna start installing the glue the same way we have on all the installation videos. Apply a nice, good amount of glue on this fastener here. And then we'll put a couple dollops just on the, uh, some of the high points there. And then uh, if you want to, you can even add a little bit of foam, but we'll prep all of our panels first so that once we get these laid out and going, we can just cruise through this whole lower section and go further up the wall. Okay, so what I did here was I just applied that nice, you know, good amount of glue here onto that, that stud there that will grab, grab and wrap around, bond to the metal nice. Added a couple little dollops of glue just in case something's not grabbing quite properly. And then this area where we have, where we cut out our hooks, we could either apply the foam down here and kind of fill this area up, or we could apply it right into this cavity here and fill this section. Or in this case, you can kind of see, you could do both. And then we will take that panel, make sure it's sitting in there nice and square. And easy as that. And then we're just gonna apply that same concept all the way down this first row. And then as you can see, the next row, as we work our way up, we don't have any hooks to cut around, so we can just take full panels, add that, adhesive, we don't even need the foam, and we can just keep working our way up the wall. Okay, so we had a little incident and a panel broke off right there. 
So what we're gonna show you is, hey, this isn't that big of a deal. We can actually go ahead and fix this right in the field. This isn't garbage. And again, we don't wanna be wasting all that product. So we could apply all the adhesive on here, put this panel up and then spray foam this section and glue it right back in. Or we could fix it right here on the floor. We'll add a little foam on there, right down that whole section. And we're gonna add it into here as well. Make sure we got enough, but nothing too excessive. And we'll actually take that. I don't wanna get foam all over the floor. So I'm gonna pull that up. Literally, make sure I just glue this panel right back in there. And as you can see, I got the same gap there as I did right there, so I know it's grabbing. And I can just take this and take the weight of itself and just set it there for a second, a little bit, make sure it's nice and straight. I could weight something against it, even this level right here, and give that a little bit of time to dry, and boom, fixed it. Glued the foam right back together. And this stuff is super strong, so once that's good uh, and dried up, which should only take about 10, 15 minutes, then that panel's ready to, to go right back in. You can see this in so fast is not matching up directly on above the other one so we're staggering all these seams and why we do that is just like in drywall when we go to put this panel in if we put this right over the the other one you're gonna have all these seams in a line so it makes it a lot stronger if we stagger those seams and ensures it being a much flatter surface if we interlock this seam with a full panel and then another seam up there. So following this kind of puzzle brick and mortar type of application where it kind of steps, you know, it's full, half, full, half, full, half, that's gonna make all this a lot stronger and you wanna apply that pretty much on all aspects of construction, whether you're putting drywall up or plywood, whatever. So you always wanna stagger those seams because it makes this uniformly a lot stronger of a structure. A lot of time we can end up using the other side of that half for the other end down there. So we keep all those pieces. And just to make sure we're following that, that layout, which this one apparently was not cut straight, but we'll go back and cut that, that's no problem. We'll, st we'll start with a half and then we'll go with a full that ties this seam together and ensures this is nice and strong there. We'll rip down a bunch of pieces, seven and a quarter. I would not recommend for any DIY people, but for all you contractors out there that are gonna follow, uh, you know, using your typical tools that you typically have on a job site, just know that foam has a tendency to bind on the saw. So when these things do catch, and it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, at some point it's gonna bind and catch. This thing's gonna violently kick in some direction super hard. So you don't want to ever be uh, having your hand anywhere near that because if this thing kicks and goes in whatever direction it goes, it's not like running a piece of wood through. Uh, this can kind of explode when it hits onto these. So the key with this is, is really gentle. I'm like holding this like very minimal with just like my fingertips, just letting that saw blade very carefully come through. And then the other thing is to make sure that you have a generally a uh, finer tooth blade. You know, this is a carpentry blade on here. You could even have a higher level of tooth blade on there. 
but you definitely don't want to be using a framing blade, something that has a very limited amount of teeth because it will for sure catch on you. Um, so, but I don't recommend using this again, but we do quite often and just make sure that, you know, you have run it safely and this is something you're super comfortable with, uh, not a DIY function. So we got this piece all ready to go. We got our cutout uh, right there. I got it backwards. So there's our cutout for that. But one thing to keep in mind when you're doing this, a lot of people have a tendency to make this super, super snug to where this barely fits at all. And you don't wanna do that because you can apply so much pressure on this, it can cause the middle section to bow out and then not adhere. So it's actually counterproductive to have this too tight. And right now I'm on the borderline of that. But there we go. So once I got over that, I now have about a quarter inch gap up there, which is good because there's that lip that needed to lock in. So I got to cut it loose enough that I can get it to slide in on a top lip, but not so tight that I it, it causes pressure on this, which can cause this to bubble out. So. I'd rather have a little bit of a gap that I can come back and foam up there than have it so tight, it actually pushes pressure on this wall. You'll notice as you're putting this in, sometimes you've got a little bit of a bow in the wall, like it's not 100% adhered. And that's why it's so important to make sure you're putting a good amount of glue and not only just on that stud, but adding a couple of different adhesion points. Cause once you'll come back tomorrow, you'll see this is gonna be a lot more rigid. And for right now, you don't really wanna follow the contour of the metal necessarily of the container because this is building a straight wall by intersecting, doing that, you know, full half, full half, and making that, that brick pattern that we're following down this whole wall, that's making this ensure it's straight by staggering those seams. So don't be turned off and be scared by a little bit of, you know, what feels like hollow points. That, that's gonna fill in a lot of time. And you can pick up something like these in, in some cases where you need to, and these are uh, zip wall poles. And a lot of time we'll take something like this generally not with a bunch of glue all over it. And we'll put this on here and we can add a little pressure into that area and just let it sit overnight. Make sure it's a lot, you know, more bonded to the surface, but you can cut some braces in and, and apply that. Sometimes we build so fast that by the time the glue is still wet, we're already framing interior walls and making sure that we press everything in nice and tight, our ceilings, everything is holding this stuff in place. Okay, that's it for the CX44 installation process. So make sure to check out the other systems that InsoFast has to offer.